So wow. going from the micro cells to a little bit more macro individuals, bit bigger, firms, countries, all of Earth. Cost. Historically, you would have spent several, maybe 15 or 20 million to build a specialized machine to do what right. they've done on something that they could purchase off the marketplace. Hey, I'm Justin Lyon. I'm the uh, founder and chief executive of Simudyne. We're a simulation company based here in London, in the UK, that is developing a computer simulation framework for building massive agent-based models for all sorts of different use cases. The work that we're seeing in a bunch of different arenas is agent-based modeling is bringing like high-performance computing to some really weird areas, like simulating economies. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So yeah, I mean, we've certainly started out with simulation of entire economies, and what we want to do is actually model the individual household, the individual firms, and from those micro foundations be able to emerge the macroeconomic indicators, inflation, GDP, and so on. So a lot of people would say that they would climax at simulating an entire economy. You're saying you're going to start out simulating an entire economy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so agent-based modeling has been around a long time. And historically, either people did what we call toy models, which ran on a desktop, or they would you know, develop you know, specialized high-performance computing on supercomputers. And what we've done and what the patents we got was to simulate on the HPC environment of AWS, the EC2 cluster. So we can use the largest EC2 clusters and run simulations that run extremely quickly for millions of ages. So when we're talking about simulating an, ent an entire economy, what we're doing is literally taking all of the data, putting it into virtual versions, virtual households, virtual firms, and then simulating their interactions on these massive machines. And then we can run lots and lots of simulations super quickly look at the results and then through that Monte Carlo, what they call Monte Carlo simulations, mm -hmm. understand the trajectory of the business, the trajectory of the economy. And doing it now in this very cost effective way is unlocking all sorts of different use cases. So we're seeing, you know, moving from simulating entire economies where the agents are individuals to simulating, for example, tumor cell growth where the agents are individual cells. So wow. going from the micro cells to a little bit more macro individuals, bit bigger, firms, countries, all of Earth. So we came up with the idea of using a novel approach to simulating complex adaptive systems. And the approach mm. we wanted to take was leveraging a graph computational approach. So rather than viewing an agent-based model as a spatial model, we would actually recreate the environment as a series of nodes and edges and the, where the nodes would become the agent. So we developed this idea, we launched this, what we call a software development kit that allows software developers to build these types of models right. and put it out there on the internet. The senior research scientist from a very large retailer, one of the first largest retailers, downloaded and said, I, you, could we use this for supply chain modeling of the entire North American supply chain? I said, I have no idea. Crack on, let yep. us know how it goes. He downloaded the software and started experimenting with it, contacted us a week later and said, this is phenomenal, it absolutely is working. Within eight weeks, he had recreated the entire supply chain. So this is literally the movement of hundreds of millions of products tracking each individual product through this complex supply chain. So, so from IXDs to fulfillment centers, and the purpose of it is to optimize that network. So you know, we're really interested in driving down the cost of operating these complex supply chains, but also importantly, we want to understand the carbon footprint of the travel of each one of these products. So when you have these types of simulations, the purpose of it is you're trying to create a safe synthetic environment where you can experiment. Yeah. And when we build these simulations of the inside of the facility, we're trying to optimize the movement of all the goods. The next step is to be able to simulate the entire network so that the output of one simulation becomes the input of the next simulation, the, the macro level simulation, so you can look at the entire economy. This unlocks tremendous opportunities to connect these simulations to Amazon Bedrock, to use reinforcement learning, large language models to actually optimize the network because the simulation can be used by the AI to run hundreds of thousands of experiments, right. way beyond anything that we could imagine doing and then identify the optimal control policies for managing that. And so that means you could actually explore that optimization space. So all of those possible yeah, exactly. potential tweaks to your policies, you could actually do that exploration virtually in real time because now you've got a trained model and you're really just doing inference at that point, right? The analogy would be if you look at a lot of the video games where they're now using AI and they're training those AIs in the video game. Right. So that was something that's really difficult. But once you have that simulation of a video game, in this case, a simulation, not of a you know, fun, fun activity, but it's an actual video game of the real world. 
now the AI can safely explore that environment and learn. And then if you've got the simulation accurate and realistic enough, the learning can be transferred from that simulated environment into the real world. And that's the big innovation that we developed was being able to scale these simulations up to real world systems of interest. Organization, they've been working on this for many, many years and it's a very difficult challenge. And the, the way we've done it is by taking this extremely novel approach to simulation. No one's done it this way. It's, it's mm. effectively using what we call this graph computational approach. And that's what allows us to do these computations on these massive graphs by transforming reality into these complex graphs. That's what allows this to, to happen. Right, because the, the traditional way of doing one of these kinds of agent-based model simulations is you simulate a space. Yeah, like exactly. the space that we're in, we've actually you can hear in the background the noise of the yeah, actual we live the, economy. We're out of the office here in London, so yeah. Right, we've got a real live economy going on around yeah. us, but it would be a spatial simulation typically. But, but the truth of it is that the spatial simulation is probably missing a bunch of factors, right? Yeah, exactly. So help me out here. So the, 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 the thought model is that the nodes are the, the entities that you're, that you're simulating. Yep. It could be the people that are acting in the economy or the households, if that's what you're simulating. Or the tumor cell, yeah. Or the tumor cell, that's right. Or the tumor cell in a host. Yeah. And it's the edges between these, between the vertices in the graph that are actually either the communication point that's going on or some kind of interaction yeah. at some level, right? Yeah, so exactly right. So by representing the agents as nodes, we can then use real world data and extract from the real world data the behaviors of those agents. So the behaviors of the tumor cell, the, the behaviors of the household, inject that into a virtual version and then the edges is the communication between the various different agents. So um, household would be communication with your children, with your neighbors, uh, tumor cell is the neighboring cells. And by doing it from a graph-based graph approach, we can absolutely handle spatial elements that are connected physically, but we can also handle non-spatial, like for example, communications between traders in a, in a financial market and a limit order book that they're submitting just using message protocols. Talk about that because you've got some examples where you've done exactly that in yeah. stock exchanges. Right? Yeah, that's where we, we really started with proving this would work with stock exchanges. So we started with the London Stock Exchange Group where we were able to build a high resolution simulation of the buying and selling of equities on their venues. And then that then started being used by about 50 of their members to see does the simulator generate realistic data, what we call synthetic data, that looks and feels like real market data. We did a long study over a course of a year, proved that was the case. They've now published about that with various different articles and talked about that. And that has led to us now working with a major Asian exchange, a Hong Kong Stock Exchange, where they're also now using our simulation technology to simulate their venue for liquidity risk management. And once you've got a simulation of a stock exchange going on, right, that model is a bit simpler than, a, than like a, an economy because so, yeah. there's, it's sort of like a flatter communication structure. It's more like a, a the star hub and spoke. It's yeah, a yeah, star communications spoke, yeah. model, right? Now, if this communication is going on at the edge, yeah. that kind of implies perhaps insider trading or some other kind of collusion going on between market traders, potentially. Yeah. yeah. You'd be, is this something, something that you can actually detect now with the model? You can see the different behavior, behaviors emerging? So regulators are exploring the use of agent-based modeling to build highly realistic um, uh, environments where they can take different algos and inject this into the simulator and explore what they're doing. And by running many, many simulation runs, you can determine whether or not that uh, algo is acting in an inappropriate manner or potentially contributing to disorderly markets. What's really powerful about computer simulation is that you can use these to train intelligence. Historically, they've been used to train human intelligence, like fighter pilots and flight simulators. But now what we're seeing is that we're using these to inform our policy makers and our uh, all sorts of algo development. Historically, you would have spent several, maybe 15 or 20 million to build a specialized machine to do what right. they've done on something that they could purchase off the marketplace. If you enjoyed this tech short, please give us a like and consider subscribing to the channel. If there's a topic you want us to focus on, reach out to us at askhbc at amazon.com. We want to make it easier for scientists and engineers to solve the world's hardest problems. We think the cloud can help by giving them access to powerful tools of any shape and size whenever they need them. And that's where you come in. Let us know 
what you need. We'll see you next time.